Is Britain's minority community disproportionately affected by the coronavirus? Lack of public data makes it difficult to answer. London it said the coronavirus does not discriminate. But anecdotal accounts, research and reports of frontline worker deaths in the UK suggest that assertion could be off the mark. Across the nation, tributes have been flooding in for health workers who reportedly died from coronavirus-related complications. Some of them came from minority black or Asian communities, according to media reports. In an interview with the British Daily The Guardian, the head of the The Doctors' Union, the British Medical Association, BMA, called for a government investigation into whether minorities were more vulnerable to COVID-19. At face value, it seems hard to see how this can be random, Dr. Chand Nagpal said, in reference to the first 10 doctors in the UK to be named as having died from coronavirus-related symptoms coming from minority backgrounds, according to The Guardian. We have heard the virus does not discriminate between individuals, but there's no doubt there appears to be a manifest disproportionate severity of infection in BAME black and minority ethnic people and doctors. This has to be addressed, the government must act now, he told The Guardian. COVID-19 has ripped through families and grounded the UK economy, and questions are mounting in the British media as to whether it is having a disproportionate effect on minority groups in Britain. But unlike the US, where data released by Chicago and Michigan authorities showed a clear racial disparity in coronavirus victims, the picture is not that clear in the UK. Experts say there are many unknowns. Mainly that British health authorities are not reporting race and statistics on confirmed cases or fatalities. This public data deficit is not only left communities in the dark, it has failed to highlight the structural inequalities or health factors that might be at play behind the mounting deaths be it geography, poverty or genetic disposition. The UK ought to be good at collecting data, Sunder Katwala, the director of British Future, a think tank that focuses on identity, told CNN. Experts say Britain has a strong tradition of research on the social determinants of health and health inequalities and is among the few countries in Europe that collects race data. But officials dropped the ball in making that information public, Katwala said. I think with the sheer pressure of this crisis, of realizing how big it is and the economic impacts, it feels like policymakers have been slightly slow to work on this dimension. The National Health Service, NHS, has been collating race and socio-economic information from COVID-19 cases, Sarah McLennan, NHS England spokesperson told CNN. Data teams will then look at how socio-economic aspects and housing conditions affect the spread of the virus, she said. No timeline was provided on when those data points would be released to the public. On Friday, the UK had the fifth highest number of coronavirus-related deaths in the world, with 8958 fatalities and 74,605 confirmed cases, according to Johns Hopkins University figures. First signs early research this month by Intensive Care National Audit and Research Centre, ICNARC, into confirmed COVID-19 cases admitted to critical care units in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, indicates that ethnic minorities may be overrepresented when compared to the general population. The data is not from all critical care units in those regions. Figures released on April 10 found that as many as a third of 3370 coronavirus patients receiving critical care came from black and minority ethnic BME, backgrounds, nearly three times the 13% proportion of ethnic minorities in the UK population, according to the 2011 census. The virus has been hitting urban centres the hardest, where most of the critical care data has been coming from. In England, Sheffield has the highest number of confirmed cases per 100,000 of the population, followed by London, Liverpool and Birmingham, according to Public Health England data analysed by urban policy charity The Centre for Cities. These are cities that have large minority populations, suggesting that geography has left minorities even more exposed. Studies show these communities, particularly people of Asian backgrounds, have higher rates of cardiovascular disease, diabetes and high blood pressure which has been shown in China and Italy COVID-19 cases to be associated with more severe disease, University of Leicester professor Kamlesh Kunti told CNN. Black people of West African descent also have an increased risk of strokes and hypertension, conditions that can exacerbate coronavirus symptoms compared to the general population, according to Keith Neal, emeritus professor of the epidemiology of infectious diseases at the University of Nottingham. Britain's ethnic minority population is in general younger than Britain's white population, according to a report by the Centre for Policy on Aging. 
knowing that the virus typically affects older people more seriously, comparing ICNARC's findings to the over 65 population of each minority group could make that figure of disproportionality even worse, Neil added. Poverty linked to poor health These danger signs also point to long-standing structural inequalities in Britain. Members of minorities in Britain are more likely to be living in poverty, they're more likely to be in overcrowded houses, Katie Pickett, a professor of epidemiology at the University of York and co-founder of the Equality Trust, told CNN. So there are the reasons why the spread might be happening more rapidly in those groups where their baseline health is worse and their ability to social distance is low, she said. Zubeda Hack, the deputy director of the race and equality think tank Renamit Trust, said, it's not your race, per se, which makes you vulnerable to COVID-19. It's what your experience of being that color or ethnicity means in terms of health outcomes, and we know through a government commission review that if you are poorer, have high rates of child poverty, have insecure work, all of those factors are linked to poor health outcomes, she said. As deaths mounted in the UK, it became clear that people of color had become foot soldiers in the fight against the virus. Nearly half of medical staff employed by the NHS come from minority backgrounds, and nearly a third of doctors are immigrants. That includes ear, nose and throat consultant Dr. Amdel Harani, healthcare assistant Thomas Harvey and Dr. Alpha Sayadu, who died from coronavirus-related complications. Harvey's daughter Tamira alleged that London's Goodnays Hospital failed to provide necessary personal protective equipment, PPE, to her father. And just a few days before Harvey's death, emergency services refused to come to take him to hospital, Tamira said, despite family concerns that he wasn't breathing properly. The NHS trust responsible for the hospital where Thomas Harvey worked told CNN that there were no symptomatic patients when he went off work sick and that it has been following national PPE guidance. The London Ambulance Service did not respond to his daughter's allegations that they refused to come once. Cultural factors Cultural factors could have also come into play. One explanation to why Italy was badly hit is it had more of a culture of multi-generational family living households, Katwala said, a trend more true of some minority communities in the UK than the general population. In Derby, a multiracial city of nearly 250,000, local Nazar Hussein, said announcements of coronavirus-related deaths have become a daily occurrence among its Asian population. Hussein, a committee member at Derby Jamia Mosque, said the community was braced for the worst and had prepared 300 graves in the event of more deaths. The fear is the older generation, many of whom live in big multi-generational households, may be more vulnerable to the virus, he said. Dominic Rech contributed to this report. Auxiliary Bishop of Guayaquil, Ecuador, Giovanni Battista Piccioli, right, wears a face mask while blessing the city on April 9, during Holy Week. A drone photo taken on April 9 shows bodies being buried on New York's Hart Island, where the city's Department of Correction is dealing with burials amid the coronavirus outbreak. A healthcare staff member holds the hand of a coronavirus patient as he is being moved at the Hospital Universitari de Belvich near Barcelona, Spain, on April 9. Emergency service boats spray water to show support for healthcare workers near the Houses of Parliament in London, England, on April 9. Employees of Hyundai Card, a credit card company, sit behind protective screens as they eat in a cafeteria at their offices in Seoul, South Korea, on April 9. People wait in their cars for the San Antonio Food Bank to begin food distribution at Trader's Village on April 9 in San Antonio, Texas. A worker disinfects a carved cross at the Salt Cathedral in Zipaquira, Colombia, on Wednesday, April 8. A cake shop employee in Athens, Greece, prepares chocolate Easter bunnies with face masks on April 8. Californian Sarah and Aaron Sanders, along with their children, use video conferencing to celebrate a Passover Cedar with other family members on April 8. A medical staff member from China's Jilin Province Center cries while hugging nurses from Wuhan on April 8. Wuhan was reopening its borders after 76 days. Cars in Wuhan line up to leave at a highway toll station. Rabbi Yaakov Kotlarski places Passover Cedar to-go packages into a car trunk in Arlington Heights, Illinois, on Tuesday, April 7. A woman in London shows her support for British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on April 7. Johnson was hospitalized after his coronavirus symptoms worsened, according to his office. A voter checks in to cast a ballot in Kenosha, Wisconsin, on April 7. 
the state was going through with its presidential primary despite the pandemic. A man is sprayed with disinfectant prior to going to a market in Tirana, Albania, on Monday, April 6. Izzy, left, and Tibby wear ventilated dog masks in Philadelphia on April 6. People wait in line to bury loved ones at a cemetery in Guayaquil, Ecuador, on April 6. In some parts of the overwhelmed city, bodies have been left on the streets. Police detain a doctor in Quetta, Pakistan, who was among dozens of health care workers protesting the lack of personal protective equipment on April 6. A Catholic priest sprinkles holy water on devotees during Palm Sunday celebrations in Quezon City, Philippines, on Sunday, April 5. People shine lights from their balcony during a nationwide candlelight vigil in Bangalore, India, on April 5. A woman in Glasgow, Scotland, watches Britain's Queen Elizabeth II give a television address regarding the coronavirus pandemic. Paramilitary members unload provisions in Kampala, Uganda, on Saturday, April 4. It was the first day of government food distribution for people affected by the nation's lockdown. A police officer wearing a coronavirus-themed outfit walks in a market in Chennai, India, to raise awareness about social distancing. A woman in Moscow cooks while watching Russian President Vladimir Putin address the nation over the coronavirus pandemic. The hashtag Stayhim is projected onto the Matterhorn mountain that straddles Switzerland and Italy on April 1. The mountain was illuminated by Swiss artist Jerry Hofstadter, who is transforming buildings, monuments and landscapes all over the world to raise awareness during the pandemic. Volunteers load food bags on a truck to deliver them to low-income families in Panama City, Panama, on April 1. Designer Friedrich Jorzig adjusts a mannequin wearing a wedding dress and a face mask at her store in Berlin on March 31. People pray next to the grave of musician Robson de Souza Lopes after his burial in Manaus, Brazil, on March 31. According to authorities at the Amazonas Health Secretary, the 43-year-old died after being diagnosed with the novel coronavirus. Chris Lindbergh hands out a free lunch to a truck driver at a rest area along Interstate 10 in Socotin, Arizona, on March 31. The Arizona Trucking Association was giving away 500 Dillies Deli lunches to show its appreciation for truck drivers who have been delivering medical supplies, food and other necessities during the coronavirus pandemic. The USNS Comfort, a Navy hospital ship, reaches New York City on March 30. Another hospital ship is in Los Angeles. Both will take some of the pressure off medical facilities that are strained because of the coronavirus pandemic. An emergency field hospital is constructed in New York Central Park on March 30. Farmers deliver vegetables to a customer in St. George's Zurcher, France, on March 29. People listen from their homes as priests conduct Sunday Mass from a church roof in Rome on March 29. Georgi David Jablonovsky and his bride, Timia, are joined by close relatives during their wedding ceremony in Miss Kolk, Hungary, on March 28. Because of the coronavirus, engaged couples across the globe have had to rethink their walks down the aisle. A worker fixes partitions at a quarantine center in Guwahati, India, on March 28. Devices used in diagnosing the coronavirus are inspected in Cheongju, South Korea, on March 27. The devices were being prepared for testing kits at the biodiagnostic company South Dakota Biosensor. A student does homework in Bratislava, Slovakia, on March 27. Schools have been shut down across the world, and many children have been receiving their lessons online. A National Guard truck sprays disinfectant in Caracas, Venezuela, on March 27. People wearing face masks walk near the USNS Mercy after the Navy hospital ship arrived in the Los Angeles area to assist local hospitals dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Pope Francis prays in an empty St. Peter's Square on March 27. Coffins carrying coronavirus victims are stored in a warehouse in Ponte San Pietro, Italy, on March 26. They would be transported to another area for cremation. Members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard prepare to take part in disinfecting the city of Tehran on March 25. Lydia Hassebrook attends a ballet class from her home in New York on March 25. People visit the Beijing Zoo on March 25 after it reopened its outdoor exhibits to the public. The Olympic flame is displayed in Iwaki, Japan, on March 25, a day after the 2020 Tokyo Games were postponed. 
A woman suspected of having coronavirus is helped from her home by emergency medical technicians Robert Sabia, left, and Mike Pereja, in Patterson, New Jersey, on March 24. People practice social distancing as they wait for takeout food at a shopping mall in Bangkok, Thailand, on March 24. Authorities are seen in Madrid, where an ice rink has been converted into a makeshift morgue to cope with the coronavirus fallout. A tourist wears a face mask while visiting the Beidling section of the Great Wall of China on March 24. The section reopened to visitors after being closed for two months. People arrive at the South Municipal Cemetery in Madrid to attend the burial of a man who died from the coronavirus. Passengers arrive at Hong Kong International Airport on March 23. Giuseppe Carbari holds Sunday Mass in front of photographs sent in by his congregation members in Yusano, Italy, on March 22. Many religious services are being streamed online so that people can worship while still maintaining their distance from others. People clap from balconies to show their appreciation for healthcare workers in Mumbai, India. A woman attends a Sunday service at the Nairobi Baptist Church in Nairobi, Kenya, on March 22. The service was streamed live on the internet. A Syrian Red Crescent member sprays disinfectant along an alley of the historic Hamadiyya market in Damascus, Syria. People are seen on California's Huntington Beach on March 21. Crowds descended on California beaches, hiking trails and parks over the weekend, in open defiance of a state order to shelter in place and avoid close contact with others. A funeral service is held without family members in Bergamo, Italy, on March 21. A member of the Syrian Violet Relief Group disinfects tents at a camp for displaced people in Cafajala, Syria, on March 21. A doctor examines Juan Vasquez inside a testing tent at St. Barnabas Hospital in New York on March 20. A mass in Rio de Janeiro honors coronavirus victims around the world on March 18. Brazil's Christ the Redeemer statue was lit up with flags and messages of hope and solidarity with countries affected by the pandemic. Medical staff wearing protective suits ride down an escalator at Moscow's Sheremetyevo International Airport on March 18. Hasidic Jewish men take part in a social distancing minion in New York on March 17. A patient in a biocontainment unit is carried on a stretcher in Rome on March 17. A pedestrian walks a dog through a quiet street in New York on March 17. People gather to collect free face masks in New Delhi on March 17. Dermot Hickey, left, and Philip Vega ask a pedestrian in New York to take their picture on a thinly trafficked Fifth Avenue on March 17. Many streets across the world are much more bare as people distance themselves from others. In the United States, the White House advised people not to gather in groups of more than 10. Students at the Atarkai Islamic School wear face masks during a ceremony in Thailand's southern province of Narathawit on March 17. People wait outside a Woolworth store in Sunbury, Australia on March 17. Australian supermarket chains announced special shopping hours for the elderly and people with disabilities so that they can shop in less crowded aisles. A member of Spain's military emergencies unit carries out a general disinfection at the Malaga airport on March 16. Displaced families near Aten, Syria, attend a workshop aimed at spreading awareness about the coronavirus. French President Emmanuel Macron is seen on a screen in Paris as he announces new coronavirus containment measures on March 16. France has been put on lockdown, and all non-essential outings are outlawed and can draw a fine of up to €135, Euros, $148. Macron also promised to support French businesses by guaranteeing €300 billion Euro worth of loans and suspending rent and utility bills owed by small companies. A police officer checks the temperatures of bus passengers at a checkpoint in Manila, Philippines, on March 16. Flowers are stored prior to their destruction at a flower auction in Alzamir, Netherlands, on March 16. Lower demand due to the coronavirus outbreak is threatening the Dutch horticultural sector, forcing the destruction of products. Body temperatures are scanned as people enter the Buddhist temple Wat Pho in Bangkok, Thailand, on March 13. Two nuns greet neighbors from their balcony in Turin, Italy, on Sunday, March 15. Pope Francis, inside the Church of San Marcello in Rome's city center, prays at a famous crucifix that believers claim helped to save Romans from the plague in 1522.
passengers wait for their flights at Marrakesh Airport in Morocco on March 15. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence takes a question during a White House briefing about the coronavirus on March 15. A Sea World employee sprays disinfectant in Jakarta, Indonesia, on Saturday, March 14. People wait in line to go through customs at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport on March 14. Travelers returning from Europe say they were being made to wait for hours at U.S. airports, often in close quarters, as personnel screened them for the coronavirus. Hundreds of people lined up to enter a Costco in Nevada, California, on March 14. Many people have been stocking up on food, toilet paper and other items. As a response to panic buying, retailers in the United States and Canada have started limiting the number of toilet paper that customers can buy in one trip. A member of the White House Physician's Office takes a media member's temperature in the White House briefing room on March 14. It was ahead of a news conference with President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. A nurse in Cremona, Italy, takes a moment in this heartbreaking photo posted to Instagram by photographer Paolo Miranda. Italy's healthcare system has been severely tested by the coronavirus pandemic. Reporters in Arlington, Virginia, sit approximately four feet apart during a briefing by Marine Corps Gen. Kenneth F. McKenzie on March 13. People walk past a closed Broadway theater on March 13 after New York canceled all gatherings over 500 people. A Costco customer stands by two shopping carts in Richmond, California, on March 13. A teacher works in an empty classroom at the Pompeu Fabra University in Barcelona, Spain. A woman looks at an empty bread aisle in Antwerp, Belgium, on March 13. Employees of the Greek parliament wear plastic gloves ahead of the swearing-in ceremony for Greek President Katerina Sakalarapalu. A motorcyclist drives through disinfectant sprayed in Jammu, India, on March 13. Workers prepare to construct an additional building on a hospital on the outskirts of Moscow. Paul Boyer, head equipment manager of the NHL's Detroit Red Wings, wheels out equipment bags in Washington on March 12. The NHL is among the sports leagues that have suspended their seasons. Students leave Glacier Peak High School in Snohomish, Washington, on March 12. Beginning the following day, schools in the Snohomish School District plan to be closed through April 24. An Uber Eats delivery biker stands at a deserted Piazza di Spagna in Rome. People at a railway station in Seoul, South Korea, watch a live broadcast of U.S. President Donald Trump on March 12. Trump announced that, in an effort to slow the spread of the coronavirus, he would sharply restrict travel from more than two dozen European countries. Workers in protective suits disinfect Istanbul's Dolabas Palace on March 11. A person wearing a face mask walks outside of a shopping mall in Beijing on March 11. Police officers restrain the relative of an inmate outside the Santana jail in Medina, Italy, on March 9. Riots broke out in several Italian jails after visits were suspended to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Medical staff in Wuhan, China, celebrate after all coronavirus patients were discharged from a temporary hospital on March 9. Traders work on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange on March 9. Stocks plummeted as coronavirus worries and an oil price race to the bottom weight on global financial markets. Rescuers search for victims at the site of a collapsed hotel in Quanzhou, China, on March 8. The hotel was being used as a coronavirus quarantine center. The Grand Princess cruise ship, carrying at least 21 people who tested positive for coronavirus, is seen off the coast of San Francisco on March 8. The ship was being held at sea. Sumo wrestlers attend a tournament in Osaka, Japan, that was being held behind closed doors because of the coronavirus outbreak. A couple rides a bicycle at a park in Seoul, South Korea, on March 7. A volunteer from Blue Sky Rescue uses fumigation equipment to disinfect a residential compound in Beijing on March 5. Airmen from the California National Guard drop coronavirus testing kits down to the Grand Princess cruise ship off the coast of California on March 5. Municipal workers are seen at the Kaaba, inside Mecca's Grand Mosque. Saudi Arabia emptied Islam's holiest site for sterilization over coronavirus fears, an unprecedented move after the kingdom suspended the year-round Umrah pilgrimage. Passengers react as a worker wearing a protective suit disinfects the departure area of a railway station in Hefei, China, on March 4. 
Teachers at the Nagoya International School in Japan conduct an online class for students staying at home as a precaution against the spread of coronavirus. Soldiers spray disinfectant throughout a shopping street in Seoul. A Muslim worshipper attends a mass prayer against coronavirus in Dakar, Senegal, on March 4. It was after cases were confirmed in the country. People wear face masks in New York's Times Square on March 3. New York reported its first case of coronavirus two days earlier. A security guard stands on the Shibaya Sky Observation Deck in Tokyo on March 3. U.S. President Donald Trump, flanked by Vice President Mike Pence, left, and Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar speaks during a meeting with pharmaceutical executives and the White House Coronavirus Task Force on March 2. Throughout the meeting, Trump is hyper-focused on pressing industry leaders in the room for a timeline for a coronavirus vaccine and treatment. But experts at the table, from the administration and the pharmaceutical industry, repeatedly emphasized that a vaccine can't be rushed to market before it's been declared safe for the public. Medical staff stand outside a hospital in Daegu, South Korea, on March 1. Healthcare workers transfer a patient at the Life Care Center in Kirkland, Washington, on March 1. The long-term care facility is linked to confirmed coronavirus cases. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson visits a London laboratory of the Public Health England National Infection Service. Tomoyuki Sugano, a professional baseball player on the Yomiuri Giants, throws a pitch in an empty Tokyo Dome during a preseason game on February 29. Fans have been barred from preseason games to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Commuters wearing masks make their way to work during morning rush hour at the Shinagawa train station in Tokyo on February 28. Medical staff transport a coronavirus patient within the Red Cross Hospital in Wuhan on February 28. Inter Milan plays Ludogorets in an empty soccer stadium in Milan, Italy, on February 27. The match was ordered to be played behind closed doors as Italian authorities continue to grapple with the coronavirus outbreak. A bank clerk disinfects banknotes in China's Zhejiang province on February 26. A child wearing a protective face mask rides on a scooter in an empty area in Beijing. A Catholic devotee wears a face mask as he is sprinkled with ash during Ash Wednesday services in Paranak, Philippines, on February 26. People disinfect Kham's Masama Shrine in Tehran, Iran, on February 25. A worker in Digu stacks plastic buckets containing medical waste from coronavirus patients on February 24. Paramedics carry a stretcher off an ambulance in Hong Kong on February 23. People attend a professional soccer match in Kobe, Japan, on February 23. To help stop the spread of the novel coronavirus, the soccer club Thistle Kobe told fans not to sing, chant or wave flags in the season opener against Yokohama FC. A team of volunteers disinfects a pedestrian bridge in Bangkok, Thailand. A man rides his bike in Beijing on February 23. Hospital personnel in Kadogno, Italy, carry new beds inside the hospital on February 21. The hospital is hosting some people who have been diagnosed with the novel coronavirus. Doctors look at a CT scan of a lung at a hospital in Xiaogan, China, on February 20. A sales clerk wears a mask as she waits for customers at a hat shop in Beijing on February 18. Small companies that help drive China's economy are worried about how much damage the coronavirus outbreak will cause to business. Buses carrying American passengers arrive at the Haneda Airport in Tokyo on February 17. The passengers were leaving the quarantine Diamond Princess cruise ship to be repatriated to the United States. A medical worker rests at the isolation ward of the Red Cross Hospital in Wuhan on February 16. Authorities watch as the Westerdam cruise ship approaches a port in Sinukville, Cambodia, on February 13. Despite having no confirmed cases of coronavirus on board, the Westerdam was refused port by four other Asian countries before being allowed to dock in Cambodia. A worker has his temperature checked on a shuttered commercial street in Beijing on February 12. Beds are made in the Wuhan Sports Center, which has been converted into a temporary hospital. A child rides a scooter past a police officer wearing protective gear outside the Hong Mei House in Hong Kong on February 11. More than 100 people evacuated the housing block after four residents in two different apartments tested positive for the coronavirus. 
relatives of quarantine passengers wave at the Diamond Princess cruise ship as it leaves a port in Yokohama, Japan, to dump wastewater and generate potable water. Dozens of people on the ship were infected with coronavirus. The Dean Way branch of the County Oak Medical Center is closed amid coronavirus fears in Brighton, England, on February 11. Several locations in and around Brighton were quarantined after a man linked to several coronavirus cases in the United Kingdom came into contact with healthcare workers and members of the public. A police officer, left, wears protective gear as he guards a cordon at the Hong Mei House in Hong Kong on February 11. A worker wears a protective suit as he waits to screen people entering an office building in Beijing on February 10. China's workforce is slowly coming back to work after the coronavirus outbreak forced many parts of the country to extend the Lunar New Year holiday by more than a week. Chinese President Xi Jinping has his temperature checked during an appearance in Beijing on February 10. Photojournalists wearing face masks take photos of a bus carrying passengers after they disembarked from the World Dream cruise ship in Hong Kong on February 9. More than 5,300 people were quarantined on two cruise ships off Hong Kong and Japan. People participating in a Lunar New Year parade in New York City hold signs reading, Wuhan Stay Strong, on February 9. A shopper walks past empty shelves at a grocery store in Hong Kong on February 9. China's Ministry of Commerce encouraged supermarkets and grocery stores to resume operations as the country's voluntary or mandatory quarantines began to take an economic toll. A worker wearing a protective suit uses a machine to disinfect a business establishment in Shanghai, China, on February 9. Workers in protective gear walk near the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Yokohama on February 7. People in Hong Kong attend a vigil February 7 for whistleblower Dr. Li Wenyang. Li, 34, died in Wuhan after contracting the virus while treating a patient. A woman grieves while paying tribute to Lee at Lee's hospital in Wuhan on February 7. The anthem of the Seas cruise ship is seen docked at the Cape Liberty cruise port in Bayonne, New Jersey, on February 7. Passengers were to be screened for coronavirus as a precaution, an official with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention told CNN. A live installation is displayed by striking members of the Hospital Authority Employees Alliance and other activists at the Hospital Authority building in Hong Kong on February 7. Passengers are seen on the deck of the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked at the Yokohama port on February 7. Flight attendants wearing face masks make their way through Don Muing Airport in Bangkok on February 7. Workers check sterile medical gloves at a latex product manufacturer in Nanjing, China, on February 6. A woman wears a protective mask as she shops in a Beijing market on February 6. This aerial photo shows the Lashenshin Hospital that is being built in Wuhan to handle coronavirus patients. A passenger shows a note from the World Dream cruise ship docked at the Kai Tak Cruise Terminal in Hong Kong on February 5. A mask is seen on a statue in Beijing on February 5. An ambulance stops at a traffic light in front of the Grand Lisboa Hotel in Macau. The virus turned China's gambling mecca into a ghost town. A dog in Beijing wears a makeshift mask constructed from a paper cup. Striking hospital workers in Hong Kong demand the closure of the border with mainland China on February 4. The Diamond Princess cruise ship sits anchored in quarantine off the port of Yokohama on February 4. It arrived a day earlier with passengers feeling ill. A medical worker wearing protective gear waits to take the temperature of people entering Princess Margaret Hospital in Hong Kong on February 4. Medical workers in protective suits help transfer patients to a newly completed field hospital in Wuhan. People wearing protective overalls talk outside a Wuhan hotel housing people in isolation on February 3. A man stands in front of TV screens broadcasting a speech by Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam on February 3. Lam said the city would shut almost all border control points to the mainland. A colleague sprays disinfectant on a doctor in Wuhan on February 3. Commuters in Tokyo walk past an electric board displaying dismal stock prices on February 3, the first business day after the Chinese New Year. Asia's markets recorded their worst day in years as investors finally got a chance to react to the worsening coronavirus outbreak. 
Medical workers move a coronavirus patient into an isolation ward at the Second People's Hospital in Fiang, China, on February 1. Children wear plastic bottles as makeshift masks while waiting to check into a flight at the Beijing Capital Airport on January 30. Passengers in Hong Kong wear protective masks as they wait to board a train at Lo Wu Station, near the mainland border, on January 30. A volunteer wearing protective clothing disinfects a street in Qingdao, China, on January 29. Nanning residents line up to buy face masks from a medical appliance store on January 29. Lai Ujun, left, a member of a medical team leaving for Wuhan, says goodbye to a loved one in Urumqi, China, on January 28. A charter flight from Wuhan arrives at an airport in Anchorage, Alaska, on January 28. The U.S. government chartered the plane to bring home U.S. citizens and diplomats from the American consulate in Wuhan. South Korean President Moon Jae-in wears a mask to inspect the National Medical Center in Seoul on January 28. Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam, Center, attends a news conference in Hong Kong on January 28. Lam said China will stop individual travelers to Hong Kong while closing some border checkpoints and restricting flights and train services from the mainland. Workers at an airport in Novosibirsk, Russia, checked the temperatures of passengers who arrived from Beijing on January 28. Alex Azar, the U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, speaks during a news conference about the American public health response. Two residents walk in an empty park in Wuhan on January 27. The city remained on lockdown for a fourth day. A person wears a protective mask, goggles and coat as he stands in a nearly empty street in Beijing on January 26. Medical staff members bring a patient to the Wuhan Red Cross Hospital on January 25. People wear protective masks as they walk under Lunar New Year decorations in Beijing on January 25. Construction workers in Wuhan begin to work on a special hospital to deal with the outbreak on January 24. Dr. Allison Arwady, commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health, speaks to reporters on January 24 about a patient in Chicago who had been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The patient was the second in the United States to be diagnosed with the illness. A couple kisses goodbye as they travel for the Lunar New Year holiday in Beijing on January 24. Workers manufacture protective face masks at a factory in China's Hubei province on January 23. Shoppers wear masks in a Wuhan market on January 23. Passengers are checked by a thermography device at an airport in Osaka, Japan, on January 23. People wear masks while shopping for vegetables in Wuhan on January 23. A militia member checks the body temperature of a driver in Wuhan on January 23. Passengers wear masks as they arrive at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila, Philippines, on January 23. A customer holds boxes of particulate respirators at a pharmacy in Hong Kong on January 23. Passengers wear masks at the high-speed train station in Hong Kong on January 23. A woman rides an electric bicycle in Wuhan on January 22. People in Guangzhou, China, wear protective masks on January 22. People go through a checkpoint in Guangzhou on January 22. Medical staff of Wuhan's Union Hospital attend a gathering on January 22. Health officials hold a news conference in Beijing on January 22. Click subscribe to receive the latest news.